Mic check. Let's go. Hello and welcome to another Solana tutorial. Today, we're gonna do part two of module five of the Solana development course. Look at it. This web page has gotten an update and it looks different now, but still the modules are the same. Today, we're doing module five, anchor program development, intro to client side anchor development. Oh, can you do the clicky here? Ah, that's how we need to do it now. Clicky, 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 clicky. We did all of that and we can now do client side anchor development. That's what we're gonna do today. Okay, let's go. Wow, that does look different. Wow, the objectives are on this side now. Okay, by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to use an IDL to interact with a Solana program from the client. So we heard about IDLs last time. Today, we're actually gonna use them. We're gonna explain what a provider and the program object are. We're gonna use the methods builder to build instructions and transactions. Uh huh. okay. That's really helpful if you have like an IDL and then you can just use that and then yeah, it's easy. It makes stuff a lot easier. And then we're gonna use Anchor to fetch some accounts and set up a front end to invoke instructions using Anchor and then IDL. Okay, that's the outline. Let's get started with a TLDR in case you only have five minutes. An IDL is a file representing the structure of a Solana program. We've seen that last time. Those are the instructions, those are the parameters, and those are the accounts that this instruction takes. Programs written and built using Anchor automatically generate a corresponding IDL. And IDL stands for Interface Description Language. Yeah, essentially JSON format. Project Serum slash Anchor is a TypeScript client. I think that moved to Coral now. There you go. It's not Coral Anchor. Cause we know what happened with Project Serum. <laughs> then the Anchor provider is essentially a combination of the connection and the wallet. A a thing that is then used to actually interact with the cluster. We need the connection, so which cluster? So are we on mainnet, devnet, testnet? And we need a wallet, so which key file is the signer for our transactions? And that's in this provider object, and we can use that to sign transactions. Then the anchor program objects, that actually provides an API to a specific program like the one that we might write and we can create such a program object using an IDL and a provider. And then the anchor methods builder provides a simple interface. I don't actually know what's meant by this methods builder, probably just a dot methods. And uh, yeah, we will have a look at that today. Let's go. Overview. Anchor simplifies the process of interacting with Solana programs from the client by providing an IDL file that reflects the structure of a program. Yes. Using this IDL in conjunction with the TypeScript library, coral slash anchor, provides a simplified format for building instructions and transactions. And it looks like this. You just call the program, so that's this thing, dot methods, that's probably this thing. And then dot instruction names. That's actually a name of the instruction that you wrote in your program. And then you put the input data for that. Then we have the dot accounts with a list of accounts that the instruction requires. And then dot signers, a list of signers. And then dot RPC actually already executes that stuff. So essentially what that is saying is we can easily just with those dot 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 things easily really build a transaction and send it to the cluster without having to manually build a transaction like we had to like in the first module here where you had to you know manually build all of that stuff and this works in any typescript 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 client whether it's front end or just integration tests which is pretty handy because it's just typescript so anchor client side structure let's go over the basic structure of anchors TypeScript library. So there's a program object, which provides an API for reading and writing to the program. To get such a program, we need the IDL, a connection, a wallet, a provider, and the program ID. The provider, by the way, is just a connection and the wallet. So really those two things is this, those two things is the provider or uses those two. And in combination with the IDL, we have a program. So that's actually a really nice illustration here. If we 
write the program in Anchor, we can generate the IDL for our program. Then to get our program object, we need the provider, which consists of a wallet, the connection that knows which cluster to connect to. So what's an IDL? Anchor generates both a JSON and TypeScript file representing your program's IDL. Ah, that's why there are two. Let me open my code from last time. So in our first anchor program, we had the IDL that looked like this. And then there's also a types here with a TypeScript file that exports the program, which essentially looks pretty much the same as the IDL. That's pretty much the same thing, pretty much the same thing, except that one is a JSON object and one is a TypeScript file that exports the IDL, also exports the type of the first anchor program. Okay, all right, cool. We could also create those IDL files from any Solana program. If we know how it's called, then we can, you know, write the IDL file. And there are tools like Shank that help us with that. Shank. <laughs> and yeah, I don't want to go into detail here. So that's how an IDL could look like. We have the name, instructions, the accounts. If we analyze this IDL now, we can see that there is one instruction called initialize and one instruction called increment. The initialize takes those three accounts, a counter, a user, which needs to be a signer, and the system program. The increment takes the counter account and the user account this needs to be a signer. This one doesn't need to be a signer anymore. It had to be one here because the account was created. So it had to sign. And then the accounts, which has the fields or one field count and is a U64. Although the IDL does not provide the implementation details of each instruction, we can get a basic idea of how the on-chain program expects instructions to be constructed to see the structure of the program accounts. Yeah, so we don't know what the instructions actually do, but we see how they can be called. And we need this, we need this IDL to use the anchor package to interact with it, the program. And we can just import the JSON file and then we have the IDL in our program. Simple as that. Cool, but let's first have a look at the provider. It combines the connection and the wallet. Wallet obviously is just a public key and private key. Really a wallet is a private key. And the connection is what we know from Solana Web3 as well. It's just a connection object that connects to a cluster. And then the provider can send transactions. And when we use front end like a wallet provider, then the user must still approve with the wallet extension. So in front end, it would look something like this use anchor wallet and use connection. And those things come from the wallet adapter react. Wallet adapter react use wallet is not compatible with the anchor provider, but there is a use anchor wallet that is then compatible. Okay. And the interface looks like this. It holds the public key. It can sign transactions and it can sign several transactions all at once. That will then actually call the wallet extension for the user to sign and it will come back with a promise of the signed transactions. So to create this provider now, we need those three parameters, connection, wallet, and opts, optional parameters. And it would look like this, new anchor provider, connection, wallet, and we can leave that empty, simple as that. And then we can set the provider, also a function in the anchor library. And then anchor will automatically always use that provider as the default provider, if you don't specify a different one. Good program. We talked about this part so far and also this one. Let's talk about this part that brings it all together. Once we have the IDL and the provider, we can create an instance of a program. We need the IDL, program ID and provider. This program object creates a custom API you can use to interact with your Solana program. So that makes it easier for us to call the instructions of the program. Is the one-stop shop for all things related communicating with on-chain programs. <laughs> you can send transactions, fetch deserialized accounts, 
decode instruction data, subscribe to account changes, and listen to events. Wow, so many things, amazing. To create the program object, we import the IDL, and we specify the program ID of the program, that should be quite simple as well. Obviously, there can be more programs with the same IDL structure. I can deploy the same program several times as well, so yeah, that's what he says here. <laughs> when we create a program ob object, then the default provider is used if we don't explicitly specify another one. So it would look like this. Once we have the provider, we can say new program and then the IDL is IDL. So that's what we imported from here. And the program ID, that's just, you know, the public key for the program. And the provider will be used that we set here. We can also manually set it. In fact, we've been talking so much now, I want to actually do something practical and actually do stuff. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna create myself a new folder here, client stuff. And here from scratch, I will just build a program that interacts with the program we wrote last time, this first anchor program. So just some TypeScript, Coral XYC anchor. And in order to do this, we obviously need to install it. All right. And now we can import stuff from here. For instance, the program and the IDL provider and whatever else we'll need, we'll see. And in here, we do this now, but we, we don't use the wallet provider, not the wallet adapter. We will just use plain JavaScript. Does it have a Web3? Yes, it has Web3. So I can use that Web3 connection with local net. And then we need a wallet, so Solan grind. I don't know, my anchor wallet. Nah, it's just to Wobber. Cool. Wobber shall be my wallet. So Solana config set this as well. Oh, and while we're here, start up our test validator. So we can quickly airdrop myself some salt. Boom. Okay. So we have the connection. I'm gonna quickly steal that. Get the wallet key, so the key pair from the JSON file. Then we have connection and wallet. Actually, let's call it wallet. Nah, let's call it key pair. So that we can create ourselves provider, new anchor provider with connection and wallet. Then it will probably tell me that key pair is not a wallet. Yes. So either I build myself that by myself, or I can have a mock wallet. Can I do that? Yes, I can just provide a key pair, amazing. And then I put the wallet in here. That should work now. So connection key pair wallet provider. And next up, we will need the IDL. I'm gonna copy over the IDL. Import IDL from here. What else do I need? Program ID, web3 public key. IDL metadata address, perfect. Because the IDL, if you remember, holds metadata and here is the address. Perfect, so that's the program ID. And then with that, I can create the program object, which just uses the IDL and the program. And then I can provide the provider, the IDL. as IDL, the program ID, and then I provide the provider like this. So I don't set the default provider, but I just provide it like this. I find that cleaner because then it's clear. What would happen if I don't write as IDL, then it complains that the type is not. So I just say as IDL, boom. Fixed it. There we have it. It's that simple. It's just that little bit of code and it's pretty neatly structured. You can follow that quite easily. And then you have the program. And with that program, you can do a bunch of stuff. That's the old way to do it. Those are the deprecated things. So for instance, program dot account dot, and then it should already tell me, except it doesn't. Program dot methods dot, 
also doesn't tell me. Damn it. That's not working as nicely as it could because the program is not typed correctly. I can do better by also providing the type correctly. I think I just need to use those things. This first anchor program TS file, so the TypeScript file. I'll be more specific, first anchor program. And then argument of type IDL is not assignable to first anchor program. Aha, uh -huh. as first anchor program. But can I import the IDL here and use this? That I can. So we have IDL written like this, which is from the anchor library. And we have IDL in caps, which is defined down here which is the same IDL again, but in the TypeScript form, I can just import that. So I don't need the IDL itself anymore. I can just use the IDL from the TypeScript. Oh, but there I don't have them in, in there. I don't have the metadata, is that true? Okay, well then we keep that file as well, just for the program address. Anyway, so with that IDL from that file now, we can type it to our first anchor program and now, it shows us the correct instruction that we have. We have the my instruction and the my sum. Those were the two instructions. And we can now work with that. Amazing. Isn't Anchor great? What else does James teach us here though? The methods builder. Okay. Once we have this program object, we can use the methods builder to build instructions and transactions. Great. And as I already mentioned last time, it's automatically converted to camel case as to the snake case that we know from Rust. What is here and my underscore instruction is here the my capital I instruction. This methods builder format looks like this. We say dot methods and then we can use the instruction name parameters, account signers, RPC. We have already looked at this last time. So in here goes the arguments for this instruction. And conveniently, it already suggests we need an input number of type U64. So we just do a new big number because TypeScript per default, the numbers are U62s and 42. It's the my instruction. And then we can say, dot accounts, right? Accounts are next. And even here, it will neatly suggest what we need. We need the data account, the system program and the user. So data account, we can have, I don't know, a new key pair, the public key. Then the system program is in web three dot system program dot program ID. And then the user, well, we have that here in the key pair, but we can also access it through the wallet. Oh, it has a payer and the pub key. Cool, they can be separate. Let's use the pub key from the wallet. Then once we provide the accounts, we can provide the additional signatures and who needs to sign. Well, additionally, only this DA key pair needs to sign because the wallet itself already signs when sending the transaction. So I don't need to provide it as an additional signer. That's something I didn't know last time and now I know. And then basically I can say, uh, give me the instruction or I can say, send it right away via the connection with this RPC thing. This method creates and sends a signed transaction and it returns a transaction signature. The wallet provider is automatically inclu included as a signer and doesn't have to be listed explicitly. See, that's what I didn't know last time and now I know. If we don't need any more signers, so we provide an empty list and we don't need to call that dot signers at all, we can leave that out. And yeah, if we want to manually send the transaction, then we can just say dot transaction. That will just create the transaction and then we can send it manually or we can say dot instruction. We have an instruction and then build a transaction manually. That's also possible. All of that with the methods builder. 
but if we want this instruction to be directly put in a transaction and already sent, then we can use the .rpc and that should already work. And that gives us back a promise for a string, which is the transaction signature, log this, and then try and run it. Why not? Let's see if that actually works. Boom. It does not work. What's my problem? Can't find module. Yeah, see there I'm again not TypeScript Pro enough because we're now running this as a node thing and then the whole thing with the modules and whatnot, 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 I don't get it. Can I just require this? It's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, now I get a different error. Cannot read properties of undefined. Just checking if, yep, the IDL is loaded. It can load the program ID, so that's cool. Let's see. Yeah, the IDL is undefined. Okay, okay, okay. So it doesn't manage to import that. IDL, which is of type first anchor program. And there the type of first anchor program is defined. So why can I here not use this? See, that's TypeScript again. I'm fucking with TypeScript. I don't know how that works. Because the IDL, it loads correctly, right? Can I just load the IDL as a first anchor program? Oh yeah, that seems to work. Cool. So I just use the actual IDL and just say, this is a first anchor program, trust me. It's of this type. And obviously I forgot to await this thing here. And if I do it now, I should get a transaction signature back. We are waiting for it to be confirmed. And here comes a confirmed transaction. So Solana confirm this thing. We see that Wobber is the signer. That's the system program. And that was the account that was created, the 3BMV. And just for fun, I could now be like calling the mysum data account one. And basically I just sum this data account with itself. I multiply the 42 and I could now get the instruction and I could build myself the transaction manually now. And I could even add it twice because why not? Then I don't use the provider at all. I just use my connection. So that's the standard web three way, right? Without the anchor stuff. So connection, transaction. And this time here, I need to provide the signer because I don't do it with a provider anymore. So I now need to provide my key pair as a signer. Await this whole thing. Let's test that if that also runs. There we go. And now we can confirm this again or actually really look at what it did. And we see that the instruction my sum was called twice and the sum is 84 because 42 plus 42. Nice. So that's how you do it. If you want to, you know, have more possibilities to, you know, build your transactions manually, then you just get yourself the instruction or you can just get yourself the dot transaction, which just does that additional, or you build it all by yourself. Or you do it like here and just call dot RPC and that will send it directly. Yeah, is that everything uh, that we wanted to learn here? No, let's learn how to fetch program accounts because this program object also allows you to easily fetch and filter program accounts. Oh, nice. Simply call account on the program and then specify the name of the account type and anchor the serializes and returns all accounts specified. So that's a get program accounts in the background, right? Let's try this. Program.account. Dot, and now we have the two different accounts. We have the account struct and the different account struct. So let's check the different account structs and we can say dot all or dot coder or dot 
fetch, fetch multiple get account info. Yeah, we can also filter by mem compare. We know this, we know this from the previous lessons and we can fetch a specific account or multiple. Actually, let's start with this maybe. Let's fetch one specific address, the data account fetch you take. Yeah, I guess so. Wow, and then it even deserializes that and I can just access the fields in it. Cool, and if I, I lock the entire thing, that will print everything. Let's see. So that should fetch 42 and two. That's the numbers stored in there, I guess. Yeah. The one is a big number, 2A, which is 42, and number two. Nice. Yeah, that's that's nice. It automatically deserializes that and drops the account discriminator because we're not really interested in that anyway. We know it's a different account struct. Oh, we think if I were to say it's an account struct and we try to fetch that, even though it has the same layout, will that fail then? It will probably tell me, oh, that's not of this type. Yeah, invalid account discriminator. Nice. Nice, nice. So going back to this, let's get all of them. That is pretty cool, not gonna lie. Then we get pairs of public key and that account. Those two are from today and those two are from last time. Yeah, that's how we work with Anchor in front end or like client side. And now James probably has a nice front end for us because I did it in TS node with an actual file system wallet. But if you want a proper front end for a client to connect with, then we need to use the use connection and use anchor wallet. Yeah, I guess, why not? Let's practice that as well. So last time James built the counter program, I was too lazy to do it, but we can use his. <laughs> we just start with this starter code, git clone this, check out starter and you install. That took forever, 13 minutes. Now we can say npm run dev. There we go. Okay, we have this front end that does nothing because we didn't implement anything yet. So let's finally do that. Okay, so to begin, let's complete the setup and create a program object in initialize TSX. First thing, is getting the connection and wallet. Just gonna get connection and wallet. With that, we can work on creating the actual program instance and we do that in a use effect. Use effect. And then we see if there is a provider already and if not, then we create one. And then we just create the program as we, am I lagging again? As we already know. And then we just implement the on click functionality where we do basically the thing that we already did, but just now we do it for James's program. Can't redeclare. Really oh, because I already declared it up here. Okay. So what do we need to do? I don't like you to be a string. I like you to be a program. Ha, ah, there we go. That looks better now. On click, we just say program dot methods dot well the idl not properly defined i'm too lazy to fix this now so i'm just gonna copy stuff but yeah so we need a new account though const new key pair in anchor web 3 cool the connection it also gets from my wallet adapter so whatever connection i have in my wallet will use so Let's go to DevNet. If I now click this. Huh? Look at that. Ha! Ah, that's looking good. Approve. There we go. And that also doesn't do anything, but that I haven't implemented yet, so that's fine. All right. And in the increment 
really it's the increment count that we implement here. So forget the on click. So this just calls method.increment with a counter. So that's the counter that it has from here. We just fetch the counter as we learned. We have the program and we just get the counter account. We fetch this specific one that we have for this uh, increment component because the increment component only opens once we created one with in initialize and the fetch gives us the result and the counter account has a count field much like a count struct has a number counter account has a count and then we say two number i guess this is a big number and that should also display that let's save and compile and see if that works let's increment nice we just pay one transaction fee approve and we see it just called james's program with my account previous count zero current count one so if we now refresh count then count is one i can increment again wait a few seconds and the count is two amazing wow so that's how this works with a proper front end like where the user can connect their wallet the main difference really is just how we get the connection and the wallet and then the rest pretty much is the exact same i could do a better job of uh, typing my idl here so that i get nicer suggestions when i write this sort of a stuff and this sort of stuff like we did here that I properly type this. But yeah, that's then pretty much the same. The difference was just that I used this local key pair and not the wallet adapter. Yeah, and I guess that's the entire thing. Now, as always, you can challenge yourself to do your own thing, build whatever the F you want with Anchor and try and access it with creating yourself a provider, then the program object, and then calling the methods on it, or build yourself an IDL to a program that already exists, whether it be an anchor program or not, and try calling that this way. Or what James suggests here is that you create a new component that decrements the counter. I mean, there was also the challenge for last time that you implement that on anchor, and now it's just the front end part for it. So yeah. Simple stuff, just get some practice, get used to building with Anchor, because once you get the hang of it, it's actually pretty sweet and easy and fast to develop with Anchor. Here's a reference program and the solution code for this decrementing stuff. And with that, we can also complete part two of module five. Next time we'll talk about PDAs and accounts with Anchor. Because yes, PDAs are such an important concept that we definitely want to talk about them again, how to do them in Anchor, because there are a few tricks there as well to make it easier. So join me next time. And until then, you can already subscribe, like the video and watch other videos about the Solana development course or other Solana related content. And uh, I shall see you in the next one. Until then, bye-bye. Lesson two, complete.